Okay, hi. We're going to start, um, I think, a very interesting evening here. It's evening in Belgium um, on a reversing physical aging. Um, and let me share you my screen. Voilà. So um, it doesn't work. Okay, it works. So this model will be um, very special. Um, so many people have heard that um, aging is um, a natural phenomenon and you cannot really do much about it. You can slightly slow down. Uh, we're going to be much more, um, let's say enthusiastic and optimistic, um, we're going to show that already now with the tools that we have, and it's mainly hormone and nutritional therapies, it is um, very good. Uh, one moment, please. So um, we've heard that aging is um, irreversible and inevitable. Well, we'll show that this really works with hormone and nutritional therapies. And it's based also on a review of the scientific literature. So we're going to start with that, showing that really we have tools to go very far back in time if the patient is compliant, if he follows a sort of multiple hormone and nutritional therapy. And um, much of the information I'm going to overview is, is in my textbook of reversing physical aging and the volume one goes on the head the hair, uh, the face, and the five senses. Very interesting and a lot of literature, 300 pages of scientific literature, but 800 pages of very practical information on how to reverse aging. And you will see it works. So let's look at the first session of model on reversing physical aging. It's model three of the evidence-based hormone therapy training program I uh, do. And you're getting this free webinar with a lot of information on what's on in this model and you will learn a lot of things people do not have the money at least with those free webinars they will get information uh, that that helps them uh, as a health professional so reversing physical aging with dietary nutritional and lifestyle therapies um, what is the scientific evidence and and I overview many aspects of uh, um, how you can show that there's scientific evidence between uh, reversing physical aging effects of hormone therapy. Um, let's look at uh, the third topic, uh, our domain that we, we overview is that uh, there's evidence that hormone therapies can reverse atherosclerosis. This is often thought as irreversible. No, no, there it is partly at least or, or even totally in some people reversible. You see here, in growth hormone deficient men, they have actually a thicker uh, intima media thickness of the common cartilage artery. So this neck artery, uh, its wall widens if there's atherosclerosis, aging of the artery. And in six months time, the growth hormone totally reverses actually this atherosclerosis. So it really works actually in these people. And, and the older man uh, actually gets deprived from growth hormone and has the same, um, um, uh, efficacy with growth hormone. There are studies also that in older adults, it does reverse um, the aging. And we see here, for, like, for example, the carotid wall thickness, also in uh, women who are taking female hormone, estrogen and progestin users. You see that uh, when they use only estrogen, they have actually a, a thinner uh, intima media wall, so less atherosclerosis. If they use progestins, and these are synthetic derivatives of progesterone, it doesn't work as well, but there's still a beneficial effect. Um, now, this um, adver not so good effect of progestin that, that actually decreases the good effect of estrogen is actually due to the fact that there are synthetic derivatives. It's actually, you probably do not have this with the bioidentical progesterone because on many other aspects, of artery health, actually progesterone is, is, is shows uh, beneficial effects, or at least does not take out the bad effects, the, the good effects of uh, estrogens. And this is actually, um, um, uh, my artery some years ago, uh, when I was, uh, I would say still young, 55 years, <laughs> um, 
And um, I, I did, um, um, I checked my carotid arteries and what did I see is that actually I had a very good result, but I was on multiple hormone replacement therapy. I was also on growth hormone and IGF-1. So I really, really very cutting edge treatment already at that time. And you see that results are good. I was on testosterone, thyroid hormones, all hormones that have beneficial effects against atherosclerosis. And you see that this is the right carotid artery, but it was even better with the left carotid artery. The intima media was even less. So really, really um, good, good values. And I attribute it not on a sort of genetic system that is better, but basically on the fact that um, I had this multiple hormone replacement therapy with nutritional uh, supplementations. There's also evidence that hormone therapies can lengthen the telomeres. Um, everybody heard now, at least everybody who's in the field about the telomeres. These are the endings of the chromosome, the, the red parts here on the chromosomes. And they have to have a, several a certain length for um, um, the cell where they are to be able to multiply and, and divide in, in, in new cells. And so you need a few hundred nucleotides of those telomeres for it to be good. And there's an enzyme, telomerase, that can reactivate this uh, so that it can relengthen the telomeres that shorten at each cell division normally. But this is um, this telomerase is very poorly active or not active in most cells of our body. And um, so um, when you, you see here, for example, that the telomere length of the chromosomes actually decreases. So the endings of the chromosome decrease with age and in 80 years, you have already a good decline in the telomeres, about 30% uh, of the length of telomere, and that is getting too much. So you get an, a sort of acceleration of aging then. So, um, well, hormones, hormones uh, can show uh, beneficial effects. Let's take just estrogens. You have here mice where they have um, uh, um, knocked out the what is called the aromatase gene, the gene that permits testosterone to convert into, well, the, the, that makes the enzyme that permits the uh, testosterone to convert to estradiol. And so it creates an estrogen deficiency in this mice. And what you see is that there's significant inhibition of telomerase in mouse ovaries, and that there's a shortening of the telomeres. Um, they get shorter because they don't have any telomeres to relengthen. And they also have less uh, cell proliferation in the ovaries. And when you give an estrogen replacement therapy, what you see is that it does just exactly the opposite. Increase of telomerase activity, increase of the telomere length, and increase of ovarian tissue growth, more cell multiplication. You actually have a, a, a normal development within few, four weeks of estrogen replacement therapy. So you really correct the situation. So hormones can lengthen the telomeres. There's also one on IGF-1, on testosterone, et cetera, uh, studies, and we'll show, see this in this model. Now, there's also um, a fifth domain that where there's um, scientific studies that show that hormone therapies can reverse physical aging, is that these are the studies that show that hormone therapies can decrease free radicals, because much of the aging is due actually to free radical damage. And you see, for example, the free radical status in controls is this. And in gro growth hormone deficient um, adults, actually, you see that they have about two to three times more free radicals. And it, it partly normalizes or improves, at least, with growth hormone treatment. So basically, that shows also an effect. And there are many other hormones. Estradiol is a very potent uh, antioxidant, for example, and has also very good action. DHEA partially, and, and, and testosterone not so much. But cortisol is also an antioxidant. Now, there is also evidence that showed that hormone therapy can increase lifespan. And that shows also a sort of reversing physical aging effect, or at least a slow down of aging effect. And um, now, for one reason or another, uh, most studies prefer to talk about mortality than about longevity. It's not serious to talk about longevity, but it is, it is serious. Okay, so most studies you find information on mortality, hormone therapies and hormone intervention that actually um, decrease mortality. That means that they extend lifespan. And here's one of the studies in um, very, um, not a very presentive study, but it does 
trigger something in your mind is that when you give sex hormones after um, breast cancer in women, they actually have a much lower mortality that decreased by 60 to 80% less. And that's what this shows. If the, you take estrogens, then you have the most. If you take just testosterone, you have um, already a, a very impressive improvement. Other studies are not so uh, dramatically, uh, with dramatic improvement, but still they do show a 30 to 50% decrease in recurrence of breast cancer and a mortality decrease of about 20 to 30%. So we actually have an abundant list of peer-reviewed scientific publications that show, uh, that support and show reversing aging effects of hormone therapies. And how much years back in time you can age, it's not so easy to determine. There are some ways, and it will be explained how to determine by determining the body composition and many other, uh, in, um, I would say, um, parameters that permit uh, uh, you to have a relatively good idea of how much years you go back in time. I do have uh, patients that can say they have reversed more than 10 years uh, with this, these parameters uh, measurement. Now, we must still keep our eyes on the ultimate goal of medicine. I believe this goal may be approached at least within 20 to 30 years is to totally reverse the aging of a person of 70 years back to something like 35 years. Okay, looks now still premature to think about, but if we can already reverse five, 10, 15 years, why wouldn't we reverse more back in time? So let's achieve that goal. And when you have this goal, you always want to get new information and to include new fundamental information in your practice so that you can treat your patient better. So, also, the question important to answer is, what is health? Health is reflected by an, an energetic and young adult physical appearance. You need to look younger, actually. Uh, that's actually uh, a, a good idea or, or that reflects well if you have a better health. And so when you look at people here, you have um, children that grow up and they grow to be adults and healthy young adults. Most of uh, those children grow to be young, healthy adults. But when the adult ages, there's an increasingly less healthy state with advancing age. And if you treat with hormones, you get a decrease in, these, uh, in this aging. We are, we're not yet being able to totally stop aging. Of course, in the beginning, you reverse aging a certain time, and, and so it looks better. Um, but, but basically, we need to go to that goal that we keep our, our, our patient as healthy as possible, and that is a young, healthy adult. You should look like a 25 to 30, 35-year-old. Um, so let's look at the dietary and nutritional supplementations that reverse our twin aging. You see that I specifically talk about supplementations. And what I mean by this is, and, and not therapies, because what I mean with this is that supplementations is actually correcting a deficiency or optimizing a level. And, and so it, it has a base. If you have a person with high levels of, uh, for example, zinc and, and very high levels, why would you give zinc? So it's really is, uh, to optimize the situation and not, and not just overdose. And well, for example, with eating, if you eat fruits, it may decrease wrinkles. This is a study done in older adults in, in the Netherlands, and they checked about fruits and they checked the wrinkles um, that they measured by photographs. They took the photographs of the face and they tried to see how much area of the face um, had wrinkles. And basically what we see here is that women who had a high fruit intake had significantly fewer facial wrinkles. And women with low fruit intake in the lower quartile had actually significant more facial wrinkles. So imagine uh, just this. We always think that hormones can't do everything. No, you need also to have a good food. And there was no association in men, was really associated that was found in women. Also eating, eating gluten-free foods may, may, may uh, decrease gray hair. 
actually this information is only based on anecdotal cases. So I've, I showed two studies of anecdotal cases of individuals having lost their dark hair, for example, as this person in her 30s, she lost all her dark hair and they became completely snow white, like here at age 43. It's not the patient here, it's just a picture to show wh wh whitish hair. And so at age 43, she looked like that. And after a few, when she was put on a gluten-free diet at age 58, so much later, 15 years later, after a few weeks, her hair grew out darker. And by the age of 63, so five years later, her hair was markedly darker and similar to the hair of the first patient. That was the other anecdote case I was talking. So he still had some gray hair, uh, but actually uh, much less than before. Um, so gluten rich foods, not good. Avoid snacks because snacks could give wrinkles. Here's again the Rotterdam study that we saw, and these are snacks and they're usually carbs. And uh, what we see is that women with the low snack intake have significantly fewer facial wrinkles. Acrid carbs and, and snacks give a digestive unrest and wrinkles are reflected by a belly that is actually bloating and, and, and in not a good state. You, it, it, there's a sort of irritation of intestines in people who eat snacks and, and, and that will give more wrinkles. The face reflects the belly actually. If you're bloated face, you often have a bloated belly. And that's also explained in uh, this uh, model. So one with high snack intake have singularly more facial wrinkles as you see as this woman here. And again, no association found men. So typical for women, but I suppose that men who eat very badly and a lot, a lot of snacks will probably have some problem. And nutrients. Nutrients can also decrease wrinkles. Here, for example, vitamin A. Uh, you give to all the adults 87 years and you put on the skin of the arms that is wrinkled at that age uh, in most of those individuals. And you put a topical uh, vitamin A lotion on the right or left arm. And what you see is that there's significantly decrease in fine wrinkling scores of the skin of the arm. There's also higher amounts in the skin of glycosoaminoglycan, which is actually um, a compound that retains substantial water. So the, the, the skin looks more dehydrated because of lack of glycosamine at, at that age, glycosaminoglycan. And this is increased with topical vitamin A. And there's also more pro-collagen one. So you have more collagen fibers in the skin with vitamin A. So it does decrease fine wrinkling. And the synthetic vitamin A, that's a little toxic, so you still need to be careful, but if you put it locally, there's less problems than when you take it by mouth. And this retinyl retinoid is even stronger than the retinol cream to decrease wrinkles. You have less facial wrinkles in South, in South Korean woman, and the wrinkle depth was also decreased and the area of the, the wrinkle area was also decreased in, in proportion compared to a retinol cream. Retinol is, let's say, the natural vitamin A. This is the synthetic one. And you see that there's also an improvement of visual wrinkle and maximum roughness, uh, and that there's also a, a, an increase of dermal distance and dermal intensive derm is thicker um, in these uh, patients with synthetic vitamin A that all decrease the facial wrinkles. And there are also nutrients that can decrease gray hair and not just one. You see, for example, a study with PABA, a para amino benzoic acid in patients who had gray hair and various clinical disorders like dermatitis and scleroderma. That's an indication to take PABA in high amounts. They took really large amounts, uh, 12 to 24 grams per day. And actually there were um, in, in those who respond by getting darker hair, that wasn't the focus, the focus was getting less dermatitis, less scleroderma, but those that improved, the first one to improve was after six weeks, it began to get darker hair. And the darkening of gray hair was observed in actually one fourth of the individuals, five of 20 individuals. It's a very old study of 1950 and uh, merits an update. And nutritional deficiencies uh, that can cause gray hairs, first of all, copper deficiency. If you're too low in copper, 
get a gray hair, but it's often a curling hair that's typical for copper deficiency. And if it's a Paba deficiency, it's gray, but more whitish hair. Um, and if it's zinc deficiency, it's a gray hair that can be dry, rough hair and brittle at the broken ends. And vanilla and tyrosine deficiencies are suspected also of giving gray hair because they can reverse vitiligo, the, the, the white spots we have on our skin. So and then in that case, it's gray pigment poor hair. And for each deficiency, uh, we talk in this model more um, profoundly. So you get more details, you get to know the doses that need to be given. Here, a biotin deficiency can also go in here, but then you have a twisted, torted uh, hair, it's stiff hair, very difficult to calm. Gray hair can also come with cysteine and met methionine deficiencies uh, that they contain sulfur and that lack of sulfur may give gray hair, thin, fragile and flat hair. Vitamin B12 def def deficiency, there's several studies showing that vitamin B12 administration, sometimes even in mesotherapy, but also uh, just systemically, can uh, decrease gray hair. It's a gray hair, in that case, there's pigment, poor hair, if there's vitamin B12 deficiency. And also there is, uh, has been documented that Omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids, if you put that on hair that is gray, it may make the hair less gray, especially in young adults or young children that have um, actually uh, gray hair. Putting on the head may help really, and they probably develop gray hair due to an omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid deficiency. So you see there's overviews in these models, but also in other models, you get overviews of uh, what are the deficiencies and what type of hair loss or gray hair, or whatever uh, may happen. So nutrients that decrease uh, dry eyes will be also uh, discussed. There are several of those. And let's look at a nutrient that can drastically improve body composition, a very safe nutrient. And that's L-carnitin. Just one month, see what it gives in all the adults. Here, for example, in all the adults, after one month, there's an of four grams a day, two times two grams of le levocarnitin. It's not even the activated form, acetylcarnitin, it's the basic form that is, let's say, cheap. Two times two grams per day of levocarnitin gave uh, two uh, kilos more of muscle mass and about 3.5 kilos less of fat mass. What a change. So I have here on the, my desk actually uh, L-carnitin, I take it in the morning and I take it later in the day. Um, also, it decreases 40% of physical fatigue and 45% the mental fatigue. It's used in many patients who have um, cancer and seem not to recover. Maybe it's also a way to give it to people who have COVID-19 and non don't recover well because it will make them more energetic. And I can tell that I have more energy by taking L-carnitin. Additional compounds to reverse aging will be seen in this first session, like telomerase activators, astragalus extracts that improve the skin after 12 weeks. You see uh, an increase in skin firmness that can almost double the skin firmness after 12 weeks. And there's also the crow feet wrinkles here on the corner of the eyes that are 18% decreased. And there's a 9% decrease in skin redness after 12 weeks. And so basically it really rejuvenates the skin. And epitalon. Epitalon is a peptide that we make actually in our brain in the um, pineal gland. And this epitalon can also um, activate the telomerase. You see here, this is uh, the picture that you get with untreated fetal fibroblast. And actually all, every point represents um, telomeres. And you see that the, there's much more telomere, telomeres. Um, um, so endings of chromosomes, uh, they are longer. Uh, there's more telomeres staining, longer telomeres. It means when these uh, fibroblasts are treated with epitalon. Very safe substance. Uh, it is also very anti-cancer in many animal studies. So uh, I think it's, it's something that is worth. It's sold as a nutritional supplement in, um, 
in, in, in Russia. Now, another chapter that we'll see in this uh, model will be the pollutants. They can cause premature aging and air pollution in and outdoors can increase physical aging. So it's not only outdoor pollution, but it's also indoor, all the plastics, all the furniture. When you have a smell inside a home, and you have books, you're, you're actually smelling, uh, you're inhaling to toxins. And 10% of our pollution problem is probably outdoors, unless you really live in a very unhealthy neighborhood. But 90% of our pollution is indoors. So we'll talk about that. You have some of the reference are here. Let's give an example, just tobacco. If you're smoking inside, this is a person who smoked during 17 years and her twin sister did not smoke. It, they look a little bit similar, but when you look close, they're not similar. The old, one is looks older. You see here, for example, swollen lower eyelids uh, that she has here, while she doesn't have, or almost not here. And then she has upper and lower lip wrinkles like here that the other doesn't have. They have the same genetic pattern, but one is smoking. So pollutants and pressure aging, there's references. Uh, we also see some information on physical exercise. I won't go into details because I cannot see everything now. Um, and the second session of this model on reversing physical aging is really important because that's sort of you start with hormone therapies here. If you want to learn about hormone therapies, you want to start, you have basic information, but exactly um, uh, information that is linked to reversing physical aging as an as a additional effect than improving the health of the person. So question is always, can reverse aging 10 to 25 years back in time with hormone therapies? Well, if we can do it, it you first have to give to your patient basic hormone therapies, and in the second step, you generally go to subcutaneous hormone injections containing several hormones that give an additional effect and very potent effect. But you often have to start with some basic hormone therapies so you make things safe and you build your uh, treatment on a strong basis. And then the third, if it doesn't work enough with all these treatments, you have to put locally the treatment, topical hormone treatments. So let's look now, and that's the, the topic of the first, the second uh, session of the model on reversing physical aging, basic hormone therapies. Basic hormone therapy, there's the thyroid, there's vasopressin, there's the sex hormones, uh, and those have the most visual reversing aging effects of those basic hormone therapies. And then there's the adrenal hormones like cortisol, DHEA, aldosterone have less visible effect, but are still quite important in, in, in the task. And each hormone treatment will be seen separately, but there's, um, we will see for each in generally, the mechanism of action, how it can reverse aging, how it works on the skin or the muscles, on the fat mass. And then we'll see with physical signs of deficiency. We'll often have an example of lab test uh, so that you can learn to interpret lab tests and, and see how you can decide on a treatment also based on lab test and not only on the clinical features. And um, we'll talk about what are the best preparations actually in this aspect that most efficient and what are the doses to get doses. And then the treatment results, we'll show all this picture before and after. Sometimes this is synthetic picture where um, a patient has been rejuvenated um, so you can uh, compare. Um, and, and there I show what aspects there is improved that normally the hormone treatment should give. And um, there's all, we also saw, we'll see some studies. There will be also a, often the additional treatment tips, really things that really make a difference that you need to know when you treat. And then some scientific references. And you generally have to think you get lots of practical information to get started. Um, Thyroid treatment, let's look at first. The most used thyroid treatments in reversing physical aging is desiccated thyroid. So you have all the thyroid hormones, not only T4, but T3, T2, T1, and T0. It really has a more persistent effect and more uh, physical effect. And then you have the synthetic T3 and T4. And uh, so always combined with T3, those work the best. We'll have, of course, a whole model on thyroid therapy. We'll talk about thyroxine alone treatment, T3 alone treatment. But what really works on reversing physical aging are those two types of treatment. 
And then you have, for example, this patient being rejuvenated with, for example, thyroid therapy. And in this rejuvenation uh, is that there's um, less diffuse hair loss all over the head. The hair is less dry with the thyroid hormones are not dry anymore. And that there's a sort of regrowth of the outer third of the eyebrow that can come. And then especially less swelling of the eyelids. You see swelling of the eyelids, less swelling uh, thanks to thyroid hormone and uh, less dry skin in general. That is the aspect what uh, um, thyroid hormones will give. And also it will give a sort of slimming effect. You see, for example, this patient having untreated thyroid deficiency. This is with thyroid therapy. You see that there's less suborbital edema, and, but she's also globally has lost weight and she looks um, slimmer. So there's references that support this type of treatment uh, effects on obesity. And let's look then on a second type of treatment that we'll discuss in this model, the vasopressin, the hormone that is antidiuretic. Uh, are, and usually it's a synthetic derivative called desmopressin that is used. What can it do to reverse physical aging? Well, and again, I will say that we're giving to hormone treatments to correct the deficiency. We're not giving it just to rejuvenate. That's just uh, an additional effect that can come. But it's basically, if we give it, it's because there's a deficiency and there are many other complaints of deficiency that will be corrected with the treatment. So desmopressin, you can get that in tablets or in solution. I would propose you to take tablets because they're easier and you can let them melt on the tongue. They melt easy and then they're very efficient. So this vasopressin is a key hormone to improve very small skin folds that you can find on the skin, uh, sunken eyes um, and the tongue with tooth indentations. So the tongue that has little borders. This is an example. For example, you have the, the crow feet wrinkles here and small little folds over. And that's vasopressin deficiency. And with desmopressin, when you give it, they, they disappear. That's the sort of efficacy that we have. Now, among the treatment tips that um, I can give to keep a better level of vasopressin is go to time on bed. Uh, a study here showed that um, when uh, adults were exposed to bright lights up to two o'clock in the morning, they had less production of vasopressin and thus lower levels. So if you go on time to bed and you sleep enough, it's better for your vasopressin. Now, about, what about female hormone treatment? Well, there are several types. There's transdermal estradiol, or there's oral and vaginal progesterone transdermal lipo Zomogel. These are the two best ones. So you have oral estrogens also, you have inje in injections of estrogens, you have patches, but the transdermal estradiol gel is actually generally the, the best and the uh, um, oral or vaginal progesterone are actually the, the most handy to work with and often efficient uh, for you to work with uh, in, in your patients. But I will give in this model several information. One of those information is that Transdermal estradiol decreases fat mask, while oral estradiol uh, is better than placebo, but cannot really halt the progressive increase in fat in women with age. And you see that lean mass is also improved with transdermal estradiol, while not much in placebo, and certainly not with oral estradiol, meaning that if you want to reverse physical aging of your patient, you need to do it with transdermal estradiol uh, in a female patient and not oral estradiol. Studies showing that um, there is uh, a, an association of uh, muscle loss with low estradiol and improvement with estradiol treatment are here. And you can see also the body mass is improved with estradiol. Now let's look at the lab test and uh, we'll show you how we will you will learn to interpret lab tests. This is a woman of 53 years old. Her skin is thinning. She complains of irregular menstruation. So she still has menstruation. And um, she, she had a blood test seven days before her menstruation and FSH was high. Uh, and serum estradiol was 85 picograms per L, uh, which is low. Estrone was also low. 
And SHBG is also low, the sex hormone binding globulin that transports estrogen throughout the blood. And serum progesterone is also low. And so when you look at what an optimal level is, you should have a lower than seven FSH and it's 21 at that time. Estradiol should be 150 and it's 85. And estrone should be uh, 120 and it's 65. So basically these lab tests uh, show estrogen deficiency. And when you look at SHBG, it should be higher. That shows that there's more estrogen. The higher estrogens are the higher SHBG is. Uh, so it's a, and progesterone would be 12 or 15 is two and a half, it's too low. So she doesn't ovulate well and doesn't make progesterone. She doesn't even ovulate probably. Um, so this you need to manage and you need to give female hormones like I, I showed before that type of hormones. And we'll talk how and in the cycle you have to do that. And so if you give a female hormone treatment, you can um, make this person look younger in the beginning and you see you what it will do is that there will be less vertex hair loss on top of the head loss there will be thicker hair more hair volume that's typical for estrogen you can almost double the volume in a woman who's estrogen deficient then she receives estrogen you can sometimes really double the volume um, there's more humid eyes and there's also more colored face not so pale anymore it looks also younger and less dry and uh, skin with more uh, skin elasticity. That's what estrogens can do. What can testosterone uh, treatment do? And uh, we'll look at testosterone treatment in men and women. Well, basically in men, it will be a transdermal liposomal cream of 10% that needs to be given. And testosterone initate injections uh, are an alternative. And testosterone in the candidate injects. We'll see about the frequency, which doesn't always match what is proposed in the flyer of, of the medication. Often it's too long uh, periods that they propose. And then the person is one week or two weeks, uh, in, or even sometimes a month with the, the bigger injections uh, in deficiency. But we'll, we'll talk that in detail. Let's look at, at women. You see that um, it's been shown that in women, the higher their testosterone level is, the more lean mass they have, and most of lean mass is muscle mass, so the more muscles they have. So higher serum testosterone, higher lean mass. It's really a, a positive correlation. But also other uh, body composition. The higher serum testosterone was, the lower the body fat was, and the weight was. This is a, a, um, a study where they gave female hormone, conjugate estrogens, with testosterone, methyl testosterone. And what you saw, and that is actually in um, uh, red, is actually that there was a more lean body mask. And there was uh, also um, uh, less fat mask with muscles. Basically, uh, was, it was better. There was also more lower body strength, etc. So basically, the results are good to give testosterone to women with female hormones. In men, this is typical, uh, a man who's always been deficient in testosterone. He's still young, but he has muscle hypertrophy and, and doesn't have any body here and, and, and does look very masculine because of a lack of testosterone. So this man actually needs to have testosterone. And even today, there was a patient uh, in one of my doctors work with me where we discussed about how to improve his situation because he looked like that. Um, the such deficiency signs in men uh, when they're older can be uh, an increase abdominal fat and small breast formation, gynecomastia or, or pseudogynecomastia, and it's with fat, it's a pseudogynecomastia, fatty belly, abdominal obesity, muscle hypertrophy. And you see also that you can have a reversal. If you look on the left, that's actually typical of low testosterone with, um, and, and um, you have normally with testosterone, you get thicker inner eyebrows, more humid eyes, more uh, humid eyes, uh, more color in the face, younger, firmer face, and less dry skin and firmer muscles. You see that the, the face looks firmer. That's typical with testosterone. And here are references in women and, and in men with muscles and masculinity 
etc. Uh, so there's more than enough reference. Uh, again, a tip for testosterone treatment, very important because some treatments may not work well, at least to build up the muscles, is um, that you need to eat meat, fish, poultry, protein-rich foods for a testosterone treatment to give better muscles. If there's no, not enough, you, there won't be any improvement in uh, muscle mass. Avoid drinking alcohol. At least every day wouldn't be good. Um, not more than two days a week, or you will really impair the treatment. Now let's look at another treatment that is basic hormone therapy, cortisol and glucocorticoid treatment. And we always think that cortisol is the devil or something wrong. No, it's something in our body. Without this hormone, we're dead within 24 hours. So we need it. And when there's a deficiency, we suffer. And in aging, part of aging is also due to cortisol deficiency. For example, this person, very old, 117 years, she's very the cortisol deficient. There are hyperpigmentation spots, this Addison's disease, and hollow face. So certainly low in cortisol, too low. And you see that uh, elderly persons actually produce uh, less uh, cortisol secretion, 25 to 30% less. They can have high levels in blood because it doesn't penetrate in target cells. It's not really a, a good picture. And you see many um, physical signs of aging are related to lower cortisol levels like pigmentation, mucosal pigmentation, skin pigmentation, tongue pigmented, pigmented elbows, knees, palmar creases, uh, pigmented scars, and, and then the opposite, vitiligo, depigmentation, can be linked to lower cortisol levels. And also a thinness, a lower body weight, cachexia, associated with lower cortisol levels. Obesity even can also be called, um, related with lower cortisol levels. There are at least um, nine studies showing that. And, and uh, abdominal obesity, two studies showing association with low cortisol levels. So basically, why would you get thin and why would you get fat when there's not enough cortisol? Well, you get thin because you have uh, inflammation in your intestines. You don't absorb well uh, because of this inflammation or you just don't have any appetite because of low cortisol. But some people have low sugar levels, very low sugar levels with cortisol, and then they have sugar cravings and they eat too much sweet food and then they can get obese. That's how you can have both different types in, in patients. Uh, there's of course also obesity associated with high cortisol levels. So it's, um, you need to, to check actually your patient uh, before treating to be sure um, to have the right diagnosis. Now, also a tip here is to go on time to bed to preserve cortisol, like for vasopressin. A same study showed that actually there was lower 24 hour on 24 hour cortisol concentration if the people slept not enough, and especially if they went too late to bed. Though the hours before midnight may count double because you have more cortisol. Aldosterone treatment uh, will be also seen in details, but we won't talk about this, but it uh, keeps your blood pressure high, aldosterone. If it's too low, you probably need some aldosterone. Now, the second session will go on reversing physical aging with subcutaneous injections that combine multiple hormones. And growth hormone IGF-1 is the first category. Insulin is one of those that can be, and this, those are the big three. Those can have major effects. I mean, you can really uh, see that the patient looks younger with these treatments. Feels much better, of course, because the reason again, I repeat that we give is to correct the deficiency. And um, so we also have a relaxin, uh, an MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone that may be applied. And for each subcutaneous hormone treatment, we have the same overview. We are going to look at mechanism of action, physical signs of aging, uh, of deficiency, uh, often an example of laboratory tests, most used preparations. Uh, what are, how does the patient look after uh, treatment before and after pictures, uh, additional treatment tips, and scientific references and lots of practical information. So let's look at some of those information. Here's uh, growth hormone vials that are used for um, combined hormone treatment reversing aging. 
most of these cartridges that are put in pens are about 1.5 milliliter, but you can have different concentrations. Here are different pens with different concentrations. Um, now, mostly in a vial of 1.5 milliliter, if they, they give um, one click is a certain amount, uh, but it's basically, um, there are 100 clicks per cartridge. That means once you did 100 clicks, if you do 25 clicks per day, in four days, you have finished your vial, okay? And one click is then 0 0.05 milliliter for you to know. So also references with growth hormone and muscle mask and lean body mask and then how it does, uh, and what, what happens when there's growth hormone deficiency and what happens with growth hormone treatment. Let's look at one case of an older male was like here was muscle loss and sagging skin. His serum IGF-1 is 270 milligrams per liter, which looks acceptable because you see the optimal in men is 300. So why not? Maybe it's acceptable, but he looks a little bit bigger. So maybe he had more before. Bigger persons have higher levels, but his, the ratio of igf bp on IGF-1 is lower. And this ratio should be actually better. There's less bioavailable. And... Um, the urines of 24 hours actually are two, so it's too low. So basically he has low growth hormone and he has less bioavailable IGF-1 going into the target cells. So he's too low. The reason is that this igf pp 3 that transports IGF-1, that's a binding protein that transported to the target cells is too high. When it's high, it keeps the hormone in the blood. It doesn't go into target cells. So the reason is not that this is low, the reason is this is too high. And that's why he has an IGF-1 deficiency or growth hormone deficiency because growth hormone increases IGF-1. And so uh, low IGF-1 means low growth hormone activity. So let's look about what IGF-1 treatment can give. Usually you have IGF-1 uh, in, in the, the States more like a peptide, long acting IGF-1. It's a, uh, synthetic derivative IGF-1. It's about 10 times more potent than the IGF-1 that is bought in pharmacies in Europe. And you see that IGF-1 reverses physical aging and she looks younger. The, the sagging cheeks here is not anymore there. This gives you an idea of what it could do. It's a synthetic picture. It's not a picture of before and I, I, uh, after IGF-1, but it gives you an idea of what IGF-1 can do. And so basically what I do with my patients when they have those both treatments, in, I try to make it simple for them not to have to make, give several injections. And so I can give growth hormone in a vial, cartridge, and we put also IGF-1. And that will explain how to do it, how to, to do it uh, professionally so that you can explain to your patient to do it well. So we have a combination of growth hormone IGF-1 and the ratios can differ following what the patient needs as a treatment, because there are differences between growth hormone and IGF-1. And that will be explained how you can discriminate uh, the difference. And so if, um, what about insulin treatment? Well, you see a culture of human fibroblast uh, in, uh, in uh, this culture, when they give insulin, the insulin will increase in these cells. These are the fibroblasts that you see here. They will, absorb the amino acids that are put in medium quicker with insulin. And this is fundamental, it makes a big difference. Some people do not respond to treatments because they are too low in insulin and they cannot absorb amino acids and put them in the muscle cells, for example. So we'll explain how to discriminate this situation in the model. Here in cancer cachexia, for example, 50% uh, of cancer patients have that uh, cachexia during uh, treatment. And when they die, they almost all die with cachexia. Well, those who have high serum insulin levels resist better. And they, they, have a, a, they have a better host support. And when they receive insulin therapy, it preserves host lean tissue and feed the host rather than the tumor. So it will not activate the tumor by giving insulin. Because uh, pa cancer patients die when they get emaciated in cachexia. So this you can um, counter with insulin. This is a patient with low insulin. You see, he looks thin, the neck, poorly developed muscles, thin arms, etc., thin legs. And here is the difference. You see the normalization 
of fat and muscle mass, larger arms, larger pelvis. So you see big difference, eh? just insulin. And this is before and after. That's one of the first pictures when insulin was given in 1920s. You see how the face gets fuller. And here, emaciated, same person, emaciated, completely too thin, and see how the buttocks are improved and the whole body is improved. What a change. And insulin treatment is also used in bodybuilding. We'll talk about that. Bodybuilders who do doping use insulin as an anabolic to increase muscle mass. Uh, and we'll talk about the doses that they, they take, etc. Here's another treatment, MSH or melatonin 1 or melatonin 2. And so interesting is that this mouse stating hormone, that gives you more color and improves also your sexuality quite a lot, more than other hormones actually, has some effect effect because it boosts the levels of other hormones. It increases the growth hormone and thus increase also the IGF-1 levels. It, it can increase testosterone levels or the effects of testosterone. On sebum glands, they are harder. You will have smell stronger with both together. It also increases estradiol effect because still makes aromatase activity in certain cells of men. So you get higher estradiol also, which is good for the hair, but may not be too much. Relaxin, relaxin deficient skin in old adults looks like this. We make relaxin, huh? that's the sort of pregnancy hormone. You have a rigid skin when it's too low, like here. And it reverses skin and muscle wasting. You see that in the pregnancy, there's sort of pregnancy glow and elasticity of the belly, skin, and muscles, relaxin. It really remodels the pelvis and cervix will dilate, but it also increases the skin elasticity. And that is interesting for us. It also increased the microcirculation um, uh, to uh, inducing nitric oxide. Now let's think, when you have a chronic problem in the place of your body, the main reason is there's not enough microcirculation, meaning you, the capillaries around the organs are not open enough and relaxing can open them up. Vitamin C can do that also. And, um, but, but this is a major uh, effect. The pregnancy glow is also an increase of capillaries of the skin. And so in, the, in scleroderma, that is a skin that gets very rigid and, and aging people get a more rigid skin. Uh, and basically this relaxin can reverse the scleroderma and in, uh, there was a study that went on and at the end, 42% of patients actually had improvement on the global score of skin. They had a, a less thick skin, less fibrosis in the skin. And um, there was mostly um, uh, an improvement in the skin of the chest, the forearms and the hands. Results is that this person looked like we saw before this synthetic picture that we get, you see they get sort of rejuvenation. Well, relaxin would give you this long, younger face and would give less sagging cheeks, more elasticity to the skin. So you get firmer face, less nasal label folds and less skin folds under the chin and the younger skin and less and more skin elasticity and less stretch marks uh, actually. So basically, um, interesting treatment, uh, um, but problem is very difficult to get for the moment. So basically, when you have all these treatments, the, when you have your patient, the best is to give a sort of basic hormone therapies, and then in the second phase to give a combination of hormone injections. That results, and then you have this sort of global effect that you see on the face of this man. Third type of treatment is when it doesn't work enough in some places, you need to get, to apply the hormones locally, either by cream or injecting them locally. So let's look at what melatonin can do among all the different options that we have. Well, melatonin is incredibly, it can really increase the collagen deposition in the skin. Uh, you know, it can decrease it. Um, you, you see that when you take out the pineal gland in rats, uh, they get 
a very thick skin. It gets scleroderma, actually. This is all fibrous tissue. And this is the result was melatonin. You decrease the skin fibrosis. That's a rejuvenation effect. And also an anti-inflammatory effect of melatonin. So there's markedly decreased skin collagen accumulation and, and uh, you reduce the, the effects of uh, the pineal gland on the skin. This is real pictures in patients. There's a combination of vitamin C and melatonin. And you see that after five years, this patient doesn't look older and looks actually the skin is basically some younger and still tight. So we'll look about what type of prescriptions for topical hormones to reverse skin aging. And we'll also talk about giving mesotherapy, a small injection in the face, and we'll give you formulas how to work with in this uh, model on uh, reversing aging with subcutaneous injection or topical treatments of, with hormones. Now let's add a fourth session that is really may um, surprise you how far this type of medicine can be for um, preserving our eyesight, our hearing, and other senses like our taste and our smell and the touch. So let's look at first well, reversing the aging of, of vision. And we'll look at three aspects. Presbyopia, not being able to read well, glaucoma, and age-related macular degeneration. So presbyopia, there's in my um, reversing physical aging textbook, there's much more information, much more different pathologies of the eyes. So it's really, and, and, and related with aging or even not like retinitis, uh, pigmentosa, all what you can do, really interesting. And so presbyopia, uh, you have, um, you can already preserve your eyesight partly through um, some lifestyle factors. Uh, and one of those factors is the temperature. If you live in an area like Ecuador, you have two options. You live either in the mountains or you live in the sea. And in the mountains, you have a colder temperature and there's also more exposure to ultraviolet light, which is not good for um, presbyopia. But actually the temperature is, is important and those people there have problems with reading, uh, most of them around age 42 and a half. But when you go in the coast area of Ecuador, near the beaches, you actually have a, a warmer temperature, 12 degrees or 12 and a half degrees uh, Celsius warmer, and 33 degrees Fahrenheit warmer. And basically, presbyosa starts there at a younger age, uh, below the 40 years. So there's about three years sooner presbyopia where the average temperature is higher. So that's maybe not a good effect of living uh, in a warmer uh, climate. And we'll explain why with experience on rabbits, etc., so that you really you know it. And um, Presbyopia, what about nutritional deficiency and supplementations? Well, um, there are um, a whole series that can help, but I will explain them in the model. We, we might run out of time otherwise here. Uh, here's just to show you that in, among the hormones, there are children with growth hormone deficiency have hypermetropia. It's the presbyopia of, of young uh, ch children. And, um, and that is corrected with growth hormone. So growth hormone seems to correct that. So why not, would it not correct the presbyopia? And uh, presbyopia on hormone su supplementations, if you have to give hormone supplementation, we, we will look at all the studies that show effects, but this is more or less the doses of female hormones that you need to give and of male hormones to women. This is the dose you need to give for men, actually. Uh, either uh, you give a transdermal preparation or uh, um, an injectable. This is about the doses that are uh, efficient to um, delay or decrease the impact of presbyopia. And this is the dose for insulin for diabetics that may help, but then diabetics the, with real diabetes and, and melatonin, uh, this is 
those that may help, but there are also a solution in, in, in drops that you could put in line that may help. We'll, we'll talk about that in more details. So it gives you, you have for every um, hormone, uh, for every hormone nutrition, you have sort of overview tables like this that I'm showing with this picture of a person. And then you have different type of treatments that can be given and that are active. So we all have a sort of summary or over, overview of what we just said so that you can really get into your mind uh, what will be helpful. You see also you have here hormone mesotherapy that, are, um, that can be given by vasodilators and hormones. And we'll talk about what type of hormones and vasodilators to give. But when you inject all over the face um, uh, these products, you actually have a better vision. And there's a Sneller chart that you see when you go to the ophthalmologist, you see, have a short, the snell short, where you can see from far, and you can see then lines. Each time, lower and lower lines. And if, you, well, they usually see two rows lower, which is fantastic. I had a patient that just was able to see, uh, uh, I, wouldn't, I didn't even believe it myself, but she just saw three letters. And then suddenly, three lines lower, she could read very clearly things. So. Uh, you sometimes have very spectacular effects that keep on because she, when she came back was six months later and, and she didn't do anything in between. Um, so one line, well, um, one line on the Jaeger chart that's for near vision, uh, lower. And two to three months later, you have done, uh, again, a slight improvement extra. And four or six months later, you have an improved. Of course, these treatments work that you give a mesotherapy um, with the hormones if you take also from the inside the same hormones. So you have inside and outside, and that is really how it works well. Otherwise, you don't get so good effects. And glaucoma, how to reverse it. You see that coffee actually can increase by two millimeters of mercury, the intraocular pressure, which is a lot. You know, the intraocular pressure is usually between 10 and 20. If it's above 21, you get um, it's excessive hypertension. Um, and if you increase, for example, from 15 to 17 or from 20 to 22, it, it, it can make the difference. So stop drinking caffeinated coffee if you have. Um, and so you see that if you have two cups of coffee a day, in some people it can increase seven millimeters mercury. So if, you, if you're even at 15, which is the average of the police, you go to 22, you're in, in the glaucoma range where there's hypertension in the, in the eye. So it's really, and it's not the coffee, uh, the caffeine actually. So I was wrong to say you decaffeinate coffee because it's some other coffee extracts that increase the, the pressure. Uh, probably the fact that you burn those coffee um, beans uh, make that it get a little toxic. And that seems following the researchers to be the reason why eye pressure increases. It's like a reaction of inflammation due to those toxins. Um, also in glaucoma, low magnesium, B1, vitamin B1 and, B, and vitamin C uh, are related with glaucoma. The average level is about 20, 30% lower of these nutrients. So might uh, come into, we, we know that the low magnesium levels can give temporary vision defects by vasospasma of the arteries that go to um, the, the eye. And there's also, um, studies, and we'll see those studies, where there's low vitamin A, zinc, manganese, iron, omega-3, polyunsaturated fatty acids. So we'll, we'll look at some of that literature. Glaucoma um, is also related to hormone levels. And typically, the first thing to think of is hypothyroidism, low thyroid function. And you see all these people, they are swollen faces and have low thyroid function. And in, on the average, a hypothyroid patient has four millimeters of mercury high intraocular pressure. That's too much. And the reason is, uh, especially chronic open angle of glaucoma, we'll explain what it is in, in the model, is well, 16 to 22% of patients with over hypothyroidism have this sort of glaucoma, that's a lot. And uh, so the reason is, of course, there's myxedema in hypothyroidism and those mucopolysaccharides pile up also inside of the eye. And um, 
decrease the evacuation of the fluid that is in the eye. So basically, diuret may help to decrease glaucoma. Also, sex hormones, there are studies on that, and we'll show some of the references. Melatonin also, and these are more or less the sort of um, uh, doses for treat of treatment you, you should give. Uh, Prenilone seems also to have some effect, and Grotamon and IGF-1. And, and then to avoid or to take lower doses of glucocorticoids. Although it's, it's not the hydrocortisone, it's mostly with synthetic derivatives that you have the problem. And you have to add when you give a cortisol, always DHA, that protects also against cataract of the eye and, and other things. So here you have associations with female hormones and glaucoma and, 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 and it's showing that actually female hormones are protective. Estradiol protects even the cells from damage when there's high pressure. So basically it's interesting. Now, what about age related macular degeneration? This is how a person looks like. That's the vision with um, age-related macular degeneration. You see here, um, it's an eye disease, actually uh, of the macula, the central portion portion of the retina. This is the retina when you look inside of the eye. Um, and you see that with aging, there's an increased risk of macular degeneration, actually. Uh, individuals at age 75 have more than 30% have age-related macular degeneration. I've done genetic tests and I'm very plus 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 for the two uh, genes uh, that seem or the poly gene genetic polymorphism that uh, promote actually age-related macular degeneration. So I'll see if I can avoid it by having good hormone nutritional treatment. So let's uh, uh, do a meeting in um, on 63, so in 12 years time to see if it works. Um, if it works as well as for my arteries of my character arteries, why wouldn't it work as well for my eye, eyes? The majority of people with macular degeneration have an early form of the condition, experience minimal visual loss, but some have more progressive one. And that's why we need to be careful. And certainly people like me who have genetic polymorphic, they have to be even more uh, careful. So uh, we know that uh, blue eyes have two times more risk of progression of age-related macular degeneration, progression to a wet form, which is the dangerous form. I have blue eyes, okay? Another reason for me to be especially careful with my eyes. And one of the treatments that can help is a nutritional supplementation. For example, lutein. Lutein, uh, 12 months of 10 milligrams per day of lutein can really be helpful. Uh, you see here, uh, you have an improvement of uh, more letters uh, that you can read on a Snellland chart from far uh, when you take during 12 months, 10 milligrams of lutein. And it's even better to give lutein alone than with a vitamin and mineral supplement. You see, you have better improvements here. So other improvements, lutein with or without antioxidants, you had, um, uh, or, well, we'll talk about the other improvements later because it might be a little complicated and we have a little short time to be, in, but you do have other improvements that are really um, worth um, having. Now about hormone deficiency, I just want to show you one of the hormones that can give, and that is melatonin. These are real pictures. 67 year old male retired teacher, his visual acuity had been decreasing. What do we see when we look at the retina? You see that this is sort of big bleeding with maybe a fibrosis. That's bleeding and that's fibrosis in the eye. That's very damaging for the eyesight. And you see much less here, much less, much less bleeding and much less fibrosis. And actually, melatonin was given. I think the dose was. Uh, three milligrams per day. And um, so this must be about like six months later. And the visual acuity had improved uh, or, or was stabilized, but there was a remarkable improvement in supranatal hemorrhage. He was getting blind there on the left and on the right, it's much better. Same picture, same type of picture, a lot of fibrosis and, and hemorrhages here, and you see what happens when melatonin is given, eyesight was improved, like sort of repair. So simple treatment, not expensive, 
good effects. Reversing hearing loss and tinnitus, aldosterone is a hearing hormone. And the sensory neural hearing loss is the typical hearing loss that you have when you have this uh, in inner hair cells with aldosterone. So what is sensory neural hearing loss? That will be explained. Sensory is actually um, the sensitive cells and, and system that is here in the inner ear. And neural means that the nerve, that the auditory nerve here uh, is um, affected. And basically you see that with hearing loss, there's, um, it, it's a hearing loss for when you have uh, low aldosterone levels that where you don't hear the high tones so much any, anymore. And uh, high frequency tones, okay? But the low tone sounds, uh, frequency tones, you, you, you also hear them less, but not as, as, as worse. So it's really typical, this is the same hearing loss you have when you get older. And that type of hearing loss, presbyacusia it's called, is actually improved with aldosterone. IGF-1, we'll, we'll, look in, we'll look of course in details in the, the model. Here about IGF-1, the other hearing hormone, did you know that a local administration of IGF-1 in the ear also reverses sudden hearing loss in humans? Hearing loss caused by ischemic hearing injury in mice and hearing loss induced by antibiotic guinea pigs. So various types of hearing loss you restore by putting just in the ear a drop of IGF-1. And it works well. Talk it about uh, a patient uh, having a strong improvement with this. Uh, treatment. It even decreased the tinnitus at the same time. So there are references about IGF-1 treatment reducing hearing loss also in one study was done in humans. And how to reverse tinnitus? Well, many different ways that can help to watch out with the air pressure to, to not be tired and things like that, but the diet high in salicylates may help. Uh, aspirin is salicylic acid. And you have actually, the salicylates are actually plant hormones. So you have that in natural foods, but they can also be added as a preservative in food. And you find it often in tomato-based sauces, uh, ketchup and tea and wine and fruits and fruit juices uh, can contain it. So uh, people that have tinnitus may have to watch out for diet high in salicylates. And so we give more information in the model about that. Also, what about oral zinc treatment? I said that increases chronic tinnitus, but not in these studies. You see studies with patients not having a deficiency. It doesn't seem to work for tinnitus. Also, in other patients, notification on tinnitus is only 7% approved, which is not really remarkable. But I will show a study where it does work when the zinc in patients who have actually low zinc levels. So it works in patients with low zinc levels. Tinnitus, a hormone deficit supplementations. We see that there's actually uh, in hypothyroidism, there's more tinnitus. And the more hypothyroidism is, the more severe the hypothyroidism, the more uh, serious there's tinnitus. And you see, for example, in this study here in 1976, patients who had hypothyroidism and tinnitus, they all reported relief with. Uh, treatment with thyroid treatment. And this I can, uh, um, I can really testify that my patients with tinnitus, when they're put on thyroid hormones, two thirds of them really improve um, in, um, substantially with the treatment. So here are references that are showing association between hypothyroidism and tinnitus. Also another treatment, oral melatonin, three milligrams a day of oral melatonin just one month of treatment, similarly greater decrease of tinnitus scores. And, and especially in men with bilateral tinnitus, they had the greatest improvement. They went out on both sides. Melatonin may really help. What about reversing smell and taste? Well, I will talk about that. Also about reversing tactile aging. Here we have a little bit short time, but it's really interesting to know uh, the information. Now, restoring scalp hair with hormone and nutritional supplementations. 
there's dry hair under the microscope here, and we'll talk about how to restore uh, dry hair. Brittle hair under the microscope, you see this brittleness, huh? It's normal hair, this is brittle hair, and uncombable hair. So to give you an example, we'll see about the different deficits between uncombable hair, biotin, copper deficit, zinc deficit, omega-6 fatty acid deficiency, and thyroid deficiency. So let's say the five major types of uncombable hair. So you have a cause. If you um, confirm that it's that diagnosis, you know what to do and get the hair calm easier. What about scalp hair loss? So in this fifth session of the model on reverse physical aging, we'll look and I can tell you this is um, really important for the patient. If you're able to restore the hair, they really show gratitude for you and you look like a wonder doctor, but you're not. <laughs> you're, you're just a very good doctor that actually gives the right treatment to the patient. Because when their hair gets back, they also feel better because the treatment also will improve the whole body. So let's look at one type, a diffuse hair loss and thick hair. Diffuse hair loss and thin hair have different causes. Vertex hair loss has also different causes. Hair loss in plaques can have different causes. Frontal and occipital hair loss, the typical male pattern baldness has also um, causes and total hair loss. So basically, these are the principal hormone deficiency at uh, hair loss. There's really the hormone deficiencies behind it. I'll let you um, guess what it is. I'll give you some information on different ones. And diffuse hair loss. Diffuse hair loss can have causes like hypothyroidism, IGF-1 deficiency, nutritional deficiency like iron, zinc, biotin, uh, pantothenic acid, etc. And so let's look at thyroid treatment of hypothyroid hair loss. You had before hypothyroid boy, five, six weeks, four months, nine months. So you see a whole change with just thyroid treatment. How potent these hormones are to reverse diffuse hair loss. And this is studies that show relationship between hair loss and hypothyroidism. Oh, yeah, there's other studies showing IGF-1 to regrow hair. This, one of those studies is in, in humans. So let's look at another type of hair loss, hair loss in plaques. And um, this is called alopecia reata, and that can have different causes, cortisol deficiency, hypothyroidism, nutritional deficiencies like vitamin D, etc yeast infection. And sometimes you need to treat all the causes to really recover the, the patient's hair. So high dose of prednisolone decrease alopecia areata uh, to show that cortisol can help that. It's actually normally the even most potent treatment to do it, but sometimes if it's yeast infection, you just put an anti-yeast product in the hair and that's enough. And you see that um, there was a half of the page that did not improve because the error here was to give prednisolone without the other hormones. It's always an error. It, uh, most patients have multiple hormone deficiency. Why not treat it in a balanced way? But it does show that there's efficacy. And here are studies with even more efficacy and, and relatively older studies that glucocoid supplementation decreases alopecia areata. And here's a topical vitamin D treatment that's given anecdotally uh, to a seven-year-old boy with a two-month history of sudden hair loss on the vertex. And it was topical calcitriol, just topically vitamin D after one month, the improvement. After three months, complete clinical remission. Male pattern hair loss, male pattern baldness, thin hair, Villus, miniaturized hair on bald areas, flat hair. The problem with this male pattern baldness is always the same. You get always the same diagnosis. Like here, your male pattern baldness is partly genetic and partly hereditary, meaning we cannot do anything. So don't even try. And that's not true anymore. We know what is behind that sort of problem so we can treat it. 
we did you know that studies showed that it's not a, an excess but it's a decrease in male hormones in all male hormones that supports a predisposition to balding so too low levels of male hormones give more balding there's actually two types of testosterone deficiency in scalp hair loss in men in male pattern baldness there's one where the hair has no bald areas it's, it's um the hair is a little longer and that patient does not have high dehydrotestosterone. It has average or low dehydrotestosterone. But when there's relatively dehydrotestosterone excess compared to testosterone, there's really an imbalance, uh, strong imbalance, they get bald areas. So the small atrophied here. So actually those who have baldness have relatively higher dehydro and relatively lower than the first type of testosterone. And you see that testosterone, and if you give testosterone finasteride, that's the treatment, you can get this type of results. 50 milligrams of this, small dose testosterone plus finasteride. So it does not work when you give only finasteride. A finasteride alone is dangerous. I will talk about that wine and things like that in the model. Male pattern baldness is due to testosterone deficiency and relative DHT excess, hypothyroidism, estrogen deficiency, progesterone deficiency, nutritional deficiency. So we need really to make a good um, assessment in the patient, right? good testing to know exactly what is really missing in this person. Because there's every male pattern baldness can have different origins. Female pattern hair loss has estrogen deficiency behind it or progesterone deficiency or also like a men testosterone deficiency and relative DHT excess. Yes, you can have women that lose their hair because they have too low testosterone. That's, it's one of the treatments that sometimes give to women to get their hair back is testosterone. And there's hypothyroidism, nutritional deficiencies, vitamin B and, and five and, and B7. Um, so here are studies showing association of estrogen deficiency with female pattern hair loss. So when you have a woman like this, you can make her hair regrow. You see that she's lacking hair, you can rare grow with estradiol and progesterone. But the thing is that you need to wait four months before you start having improvements. So you need to be patient with hormones. And um, you will also, with the hairy growth, thanks to estradiol and progesterone, have, of course, improvement of other physical signs of estrogen deficiency and progesterone deficiency. So that's how you monitor the patient. Total hair loss is actually due to multiple hormone deficiencies. There's always, almost always an SATH deficiency, hypothyroidism, uh, the sex hormone deficiency in men and women, and growth hormone one deficiency. But the most two important is SATH deficiency and hypothyroidism. And there's also some nutritional deficiencies like zinc, iron, vitamins, B5 and B7, etc. So ACTH and alopecia totalis can give hairy growth and you get that sort of result. So it takes, takes a time for, for getting. It's not something you have within three weeks. You need a year, a year and a half to get total results. And you need to give all the hormone, different hormone that person is missing. So that will be taught in what type of hormone for which area of the head to recover, et cetera, will be seen. Here are references showing that SHH does decrease alopecia totalis or areata. And how to reverse gray hair? One of the enigmas in is that, but here the enigma is partly unsolved. Although I myself still have some gray hair, so I um, haven't solved all, but I must say I didn't apply all the things. Sometimes I always wait. So, um, I have to be a better patient in the next year that comes. And so MSH deficiency and hypothyroidism are the two major hormone deficiencies behind it. And there are nutritional deficiencies. We'll talk more or less abundantly about it. We already gave some information in the beginning of this lecture for the nutrient deficiency. And this is the story, one of the two anecdotal cases I will talk about, a person having gray hair and totally reversing was getting thyroid therapy. So we'll give the details 
uh, more in the lecture, in the session on uh, scalp hair loss. Now, <clears throat> another is how to restore the, the aging of the face huh? with hormone and nutritional supplements. Can we do that? Yes, we can with other procedures than aesthetical medicine. For this, much, much of the aging here that people get is unnecessary. And you are the magician, you there in your seat there, or um, you are the person who's able as health professional, as a doctor, as a physician to reverse the situation. So much of the information of here is in with a lot of pictures, a lot of practical information and many scientific references. And you get, for example, what is important to know is that the face wrinkles as the belly bloats. So the more bloating the belly is and the more droopy it is, the more wrinkles they are. And it's not just fortress. It's almost always like that. So basically to improve, you also must improve the intestines, good food, etc. Uh, the right food, right time of the food. And we'll talk about what is the right time of food will be. So this is also explained in the book and all the treatments you see that in this reverse physical aging you see in yellow are the more important treatments. In light yellow are the treatments that may work, but not as good as the, the ones who are marked in bright yellow. And then those in white will work, but, but not dramatically compared to the treatments that have um, a bright yellow background. So you immediately know what may help best uh, for in this example for wrinkles and, and, and things like that. So it's a book really that is probably ahead of its time, but it's, it's part of this time because the information is already there and it's just brought together. So in facial aging, we'll see uh, aging faces, facial color abnormalities, swollen faces, thin faces, wrinkles, and we'll see different topics of that. For aging faces will be uh, also less masculine faces or less feminine face, dehydrated faces, sun damaged face. So all types of aging of the face will be overlooked. And then we'll, we'll look also about when the face, the, the tint of the color is too pale of the face, or it's get yellowish, or pigment spots, or melasma, how to reverse that because it's reversible by, uh, by treating the cause. Puffy, if the face is too swollen, puffy faces, obese faces, moonlight swollen face, so different type of swelling of the face. And also different types of having a thin face, a hollow face, a hollow face or a very thin face, or, or a face without enough muscles, it's losing its muscles or wrinkles. So basically we'll have really, you will get the information that you need to help patients uh, in, in recover a better appearance of their face again. So reversing the aging faces, uh, for example, this is Grotemon with a lot of typical signs of, with the, the sagging eyelids, the sagging cheeks here, the flat volume of the hair, and the volume of the hair is much better here. And there's less forehead wrinkles. There were some, there were none here. There's no nasal label folds anymore. And there's firmer cheeks. And this patient felt much better, really. That was even the greatest effect. I published a study in 1997 uh, with the first patient I treated with Grotemon treatment. And we saw that 71 had the less wrinkled face with Grotemon treatment. And did not have a less uh, wrinkled face. So most patients really had less, but they had less eyelid ptosis. The droopy eyelids were less. The sagging cheeks were less here. And, and the skin doses, the, the folds on the skin were less in, in many of these patients. So you really had an improvement. Also, uh, in this lecture, we'll give uh, information on tips uh, on Grotemon. And one of the information is here that um, IGF-1 can increase uh, free T3. Grotemon can increase it even more. But when you give Grotemon IGF-1, it markedly increases the thyroid hormone so that patients who take thyroid hormones may have to decrease by 30 to 50% their um, treatment. 
So topical melatonin for the face um, is one of the treatments you give. There exists some topical, uh, really good good uh, cream that oil you can put on the uh, the face. Um, I, I received some samples, and uh, basically um, I, I almost never succeeded in being being able to put it because my wife and my two daughters they take it directly away and keep it for themselves. So basically. Um, I, I have to insist more to get my, my own sample. And I think I have to hide it away uh, because that's the only way that uh, I, I will be able to, 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 to use it because they're so happy about it. And I know many patients really happy about it because it gives a rejuvenating effect that is very good. Now, how to reverse the, the face that loses its masculinity, uh, masculine, less masculine or less feminine, depending on the sex. Well, there's something very special that we'll talk about is that men are getting less male, maybe a little less sexy, actually. Uh, because when you look at the um, skulls of uh, our ancestors 50,000 or 100,000 years ago, that's how they looked. But look at now, it's, it's smaller and, and it's, it's less masculine, actually. The, the eyebrows, for example, there were more bones there. They were more masculine, but they were probably also more violent and that's difficult to live in a society. So exactly, we, we're having now, or the men are having a sort of impaired production or less or decrease in sensitivity of testosterone. To testosterone. And see this, um, to show um, um, the, uh, what testosterone does on a man, you see that this man has a relatively short face, okay? That is a mark that is adulthood testosterone since he passed the puberty that was too low. He also doesn't have much beard, okay? Look at this man. This man probably has a strong beard and um, but basically he has a longer face and that is linked to more adulthood testosterone. There are other characteristics of the face that link to testosterone that we'll see in the model. Here's one other, eyebrows. You see small and are, are not are almost non-existing eyebrows, low ad adult testosterone in saliva. And, and when it's pronounced in the middle here, near the nose, that part, that is dominated by testosterone. And if it's, it's, there's a lot, it means there's high adult testosterone since long. How to reverse uh, the declining sexuality of the aging faces? Well. The feminine face, this is a very masculine face. This is a masculine, it's more um, angular. While uh, when uh, it, the face gets more feminine, it is actually more oval. oval. You see, it gets more roundish. And Estrogen can also decrease skin wrinkling and dry skin in postmenopausal women. You see less wrinkled skin, less senile dry skin with uh, estrogen, about 33% less, one third less wrinkled. So it has efficacy. And we'll see other uh, studies and, 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 and other uh, information for you to know to, do, to be a, a good doctor. Reversing dehydrated face, face that have not enough water inside of it. And you see when you have the eyes that are deep in the orbits and there are sharp wrinkles here and little folds here. Uh, well, that's can be several deficiencies, can be vasopressin or aldosterone deficiency, especially around the um, corner of the eyes, the crawl feet wrinkles are uh, improved by taking fluidocortisone or aldosterone. Fluidocortisone is the synthetic form of aldosterone. But also desmopressin can improve that. It depends what the deficient is and will try to help you to be able to discriminate between what is deficient. Um, you see, this is uh, studies on skin folds as sign of dehydration, the association with vasopressin deficiency. So how to restore when the face has been damaged by the sun? Well, one of these treatments is again melatonin. It can improve the proliferation of keratinocytes. You see here, for example, you see an improvement of the keratinocytes in vitro. 
And uh, melatonin not only improves the keratinocytes, the, the epidermis here, but can also improve the skin fiber by survival so that um, they can make collagen so that skin gets better, younger. You see that uh, when skin is exposed to ultraviolet violet B, you actually have a decrease about 50%, almost 50% of the fibroblasts die. Well, there's almost nothing dies, none dies uh, with melatonin treatment in the culture. So it really helps to protect the skin. And so how to influence the skin tint of the face? Well, first, how to improve a pale face. This is typical pale face of estrogen deficiency, but there are other uh, deficiencies that give pale face like thyroid and, and others and then testosterone deficiency. Well, you basically need to give the hormones that is missing to improve the situation. How to improve the sun tanning of the face that the face can sun tan easier. Before and after you see that it really gives a darker skin. Um, so we'll talk about different things, how to do it. Um, and um, also what is more problematic for many patients is uh, when they have pigment spots and it doesn't go away or melasma. So this is a person with hyperpigmentation spots and she receives a topical melatonin vitamin C supplementation after two years, it's better. It's even better if you would treat another cause, but I will talk about that in uh, the session. How to slim swollen faces. This is a swollen face. There's hypothyroidism that can swell up, too low thyroid. Also too much estrogens can give that by fluid retention. Our cortisol excess um, can give that also. Our insulin excess, but then there's too much fat in the face. So there's really ways to discriminate what the cause is behind the swelling of the face. So you know how to give the good treatment. Of course, you still need to do a laboratory test and do it uh, well. Growth among IGF-1 excess, there's, um, that acromegaly um, can also give a swollen face and it will tell you how to discriminate. And then eventually also aldosterone or excess can give uh, a swollen face. Now, this is a puffy face swollen more in the morning because of low thyroid. And when you give thyroid, we'll see the change. So we'll, we'll try to get you um, enough before and after pictures of every cause of swelling of the face so that you really can recognize that. It gets into a sixth sense, uh, like an intuition that you get. And you see here, women with adequate estrogen and progesterone uh, balance. They look slim in face, average face. This is a woman well balanced. This is when she gets, uh, when a woman gets in estrogen predominance, she gets bigger breasts and swells more in the face. And then when it's even much more, much bigger breasts, much more swelling of the face, severe estrogen predominance. So we'll tell how to correct that so that you, you are able to do it well. So at, at certain time, you will also be able to recognize what the degree of severity is of the excess or the deficiency of hormone that causes the swelling of the face. How to get smaller faces become bigger? Is it possible? Yes, yes, it is. So there are several, several types of hollow face. There's, there's also thin face or sarcopenic face with lack of muscles. And hollow face has a deficiency, cortisol deficiency or estrogen deficiency. Aldosterone deficiency can also be a cause. Very thin face, you really have to think on insulin deficiency our cortisol deficiency and sarcopenic phase and face lacking muscles grow to an IGF-1 deficiency, but also testosterone deficiency may be behind that. So as you see, I try always to give you an overview so that you're able to, to get an idea of what is causing a certain change of appearance of our body. And so what to give as a treatment after lab test confirmation of the deficiency or excess. So this is an untreated patient that is lacking cortisol. You see also he has pigmentation part, his face is more uh, pigmented. And look the change with hydrocortisone treatment two years out. He also looks more muscular because other 
glands work better if the adrenal deficiency is corrected. And he has also more light color Caucasian skin, while here it was brownish with dark circles under the eyes. So thin face association with cortisol deficiency and, and insulin uh, deficiency and thin face and um, et cetera, also um, getting a too little less muscular face due to excess thyroid hormones. And so we'll see many of those see different situations and, and these are the references. Now, how do you reduce wrinkles? By treating the cause, not by putting fillers, uh, also, all sort of inflammatory things. You can improve you can use aesthetical medicine in second position, but first you need to treat the cause and what the cause cannot be in, improved, if, if it cannot be improved, because most of it really can be improved, then you do aesthetical procedures. So we'll look about what can do for forehead wrinkles, each set for uh, frown lines, crow feet wrinkles, nasal label folds, upper chin wrinkles. And, and um, here, for example, you see that growth hormone deficient uh, pubertal children have actually a higher stiffness score in yellow here and lack of skin elasticity. The non-elasticity index is higher. So they already have an aging skin. Again, references about that, that show that, so we'll go over. And we'll end this session uh, on the face, on restoring the face by hormone measure therapy for wrinkles. And we'll talk also about the details, uh, the doses that need to be given. Now, restoring the neck, chest, back, and arms with hormone and nutritional supplementation. So how can you improve the neck? We saw the face, the, the head actually with the, the hair. Now let's do the neck and upper body actually. Well, there are several ways. There's reversing the aging of the upper body. We'll see, as you see, the neck, the chest, the back, the arms and hands, and we'll see different aspects there that we'll see one after the other. So you see uh, loose skin folds on the neck, you goiter, for example, organic mastia, pseudo on the chest, or small or large breast, droopy breast, body hair overgrowth, the fatty back, the sarcopenic back. There's so many, many different things, the small and the large shoulders, thick arms, thin arms, sagging tricep, tri skin on the arms, pigmented arms, aging hands, atrophic hands, small hands, swollen hands, rheumatoid hands, longitudinal line, the nails, different nails, brittle nails and different uh, things. And so all these aspects that often happen with aging um, have a cause, our causes and uh, are partly or totally reversible with the hormone our nutritional treatment. So let's look at the chest first. Uh, we posted the neck. This is how a chest should look like of a healthy woman. And this is how a chest should look like of a healthy man. Firm, firm is the word. Firm, good structured, well structured. That means sufficient hormones, firm, firm chest. And this is an obese chest, something's wrong here. In Klinefelter syndrome, they have a lack of uh, testosterone. Poorly muscled and obese chest and adult onset testosterone deficiency has that also. So it's a feminization of the chest compared to what we just saw of the, the very male masculine chest that we saw just before. And, and so, Let's look at gynecomastia. Gynecomastia is with milk glands is actually with too much estrogens in the blood. And that is the same for women as for men. You see men have actually as women breast when they have too much in women it's called macromastia when the breasts are very big and in men gynecomastia. So testosterone deficiency can create gynecomastia. There's many references on that, but basically there's also in generally also high levels at the same time of estrogens, especially of estradiol in the serum. We'll talk about also the, the usefulness or, or the, the limits also 
of anabolic steroids in, in, the, in case uh, to improve the chest. And then we'll look at enlarged breast in women. And for example, a large breast can also have breast cyst. And it's then generally um, a sign that there's estrogen excess. That's it, estrogen predominance. And so usually um, behind the estrogen excess is actually a progesterone deficiency that permits to have an estrogen excess. So progesterone normally uh, will um, decrease the efficacy of estrogens by converting the very potent estradiol to the low, the very the weak estrogen estrone. So that's what the best, but if there's not enough progesterone, the estradiol, very potent estradiol piles up and there's estrogen dominance. Testosterone can also be de deficient because testosterone is necessary to oppose estrogens. It's usually when men or women receive high dose of testosterone, it makes them breast flap, it, the breast shrink in certain sense. Um, it works like a progesterone. Alcohol, coffee, tea, and other caffeinated drinks and food can give also high estradiol levels. We'll talk about that in the, the, the session. And also endocrine disruptors. The endocrine disruptors are, are substances out of toxins, actually, of the environment, like pesticides, that have an estrogenic activity and then can also enlarge the breast of a woman. Iodine deficiency, vitamin B6 deficiency, and vitamin A also may give problems. And also thyroid and cortisol deficiency because in those deficiencies, there's no good ovulation and then there's not enough progesterone made in the second half of the cycle. So you can improve ovulation and progesterone production by giving thyroid and cortisol. So we'll, we'll give also doses of the treatment in the session, how to do it. Armpits can be too brownish armpits, that's cortisol deficiency. And we'll talk about how to get rid of it uh, without aesthetical procedure. You just need to create deficiency uh, behind that. Thick arms, you see the thick arms uh, that can be just swollen because it's full of mixed edema, not even fat. That can be due to thyroid deficiency, as in those two um, patients. And sagging triceps is basically with growth hormone therapy, you decrease the droopy triceps. You see, it gets firmer triceps after with growth, that's typical with growth hormone supplementation, but there's one hormone that does it even much more. We'll talk about that. I'll keep that as a surprise for you because it's really important to know that. Aging hands, aging hands uh, like this, if there's a lack of tone, you just push here on your own hand. If it's a lack of tone, you're lacking growth hormone because if you take growth hormone, you have an improvement of this uh, tonus. 42% of the patients will improve. That's a study that I published when I, in 1997. Swollen hands, thyroid deficiency typically, if it's um, swollen and it's not really fluid retention, it's just tonic and it's more swollen in the morning, you have to uh, suspect thyroid deficiency, hypothyroidism. And here are um, some of the studies um, showing a relationship, also a study I published in, um, 2004. So then we're at the last part uh, of our um, model on reversing physical aging, how to restore um, the aging of the lower body. And again, we'll see several parts. We'll see the abdomen. Uh, it's very important to have a beautiful abdomen. I say this to men, it's much more important than women because uh, women genetically are programmed to first look at a man on the belly. The belly is flat, they are more attractive. Good to know. Abdomen, pelvis, male genitals, female genitals, legs and feet. We'll all look in that session about the things. So we'll see obese abdomen, a droopy abdomen, pubic hair, inguinal folds, hernia, anus, buttocks, uh, droopy buttocks, for example. Uh, the penis, uh, and loose foreskin, phimosis, or small penis, peronis disease, what to do um, because it's reversible. Testicles, small testicles, varicocele, lax scrotum, prostate hypertrophy and cancer, clitoris atrophy, vulvar atrophy in women, uh, vaginal prolapse. Must say for vaginal prolapse, 
it's better to do prevention by giving the hormone some time that once you have that, much more difficult to restore. You can have good efficacy, but not fantastic if it's very, very important. In the very beginning stage, you're, you're efficient with the treatments. Atrophic legs, uh, sagging in the sides of the thighs, cellulite, really efficient treatment for cellulite, fatty knees, thick calves, swollen calves, thin skin on lower, bruised on legs, varicose veins, venous leg ulcers, swollen feet, they say tripartite fear. Well, so we'll see many, many different. We even look at gangrene of the feet and toes. Actually, um, with hormones can be reversed if you're on time. So obese abdomen, growth hormone supplementation uh, works on the flat abdomen and um, this is what happens with growth hormone supplementation. It's a picture I downloaded from internet, but it's basically what happens. You have a decrease in fat in the abdomen and it gets firmer muscles. And here's a, a CT scan before and after growth hormone treatment. You see that after growth hormone treatment, there's a sort of disappearance of the fat. The fat, the black here around is fat tissue. It's much less, it's almost disappeared in the frontal part and 50% less on the back, but also in the middle, there's a lot of fat in the visceral fat, and that's also decreased. And the retroperitoneal fat that is here, that is also much less. So that's growth hormone treatment. Of course, it's not the lowest dose of growth hormone. Huh? It's, it's a good dose. There was a dose, I think, of two units a day that was given to these patients. Gain in kilos, you see that after um, half a year of growth hormone treatment, there was about uh, almost two kilos of lean mass extra, but there was six kilos of fat mass less to show how efficient it is to give growth hormone. What about the buttox? Well, you have uh, buttox that can be insulin excess and insulin deficiency. You cannot reverse this droopiness of, um, of the buttox without adding insulin to the treatment. Even with growth hormone and IGF-1 and testosterone, etc., you cannot reverse it sufficiently. You need also insulin in these patients. And you can only give insulin if they're um, normal weight or low weight, not if they're high weight. So we'll talk about all these uh, differences and how to do it safely and efficiently. You have other causes of fatty buttocks, estrogen excess, thyroid deficiency, other causes of droopy buttocks, IGF-1 deficiency, growth hormone, testosterone deficiencies for in both actually. Um, so often it's a combination of treatment need to reverse the droopiness of the buttocks or the fatty buttocks. Penis, um, the penis can shrink with aging or may have never been um, long enough. So these are the pubertal stages of um, uh, tan the tanner stages of uh, male genital development. And you see that if an adult above 22 years has this type of uh, penis, this size, he has an, had an adult level of antigens. But if he had a smaller size like this, he had probably had always too low antigen levels to completely develop his penis size. So with that information, we know that this patient probably needs testosterone. It's not just a characteristic because the low testosterone levels are low, are linked to less life expectancy, to more diabetes, to more obesity, and to more uh, fatigue, for example. So, so, so it's it's just not benign, and and um, uh, it, it does give an idea of um, the testosterone impregnation since many years of the patient, the penis size. Topical testosterone on the penis of uh, um, boys with very small penis, hypospadia. Uh, actually, 1% uh, testosterone propionate, which is not much. Uh, after one month, increase of penile diameter length and glance diameter was also increased. And um, there were side effects. There was some pubic hair developing and darkening of the skin skill. But when you stopped 
uh, the treatment. After three months, everything was gone again. So there was no pubic hair anymore, and that's it, it well, fell away. What about Peronese disease? This is Peronese, it's an inflammatory condition with some hardness here, uh, curved painful uh, erections also, because of a sort of fibrosis here. It's reversible, we'll talk about the treatment in the module. Small testicles, the smaller the testicle, the less spermatogenesis there is. That's why it's always interesting that you check in your patient the size of the penis. Uh, the size of the testicles, because that gives a good idea of your uh, spermatozoids. The, the number of uh, spermatogenesis. If it's small, there's not much uh, spermatogenesis. Lack scrotum. Depending on the, uh, the, the scrotum here, this is tone scrotum, it, I would say it's good, but this is an adult sized testicles with two lax scrotum, and, and then it's even much more in an older adult, that indicates that there's testosterone deficiency, much more than dehydrotestosterone, because testosterone is a muscle hormone and it's a lack of muscles here. Also lack of growth hormone can give that, but basically mostly lack of testosterone. So when you have that in your patient, you know testosterone is probably too low. Prostate hypertrophy. You see that zinc can decrease prostate volume and also can decrease uh, uh, inflammation. So also um, urination is then better. So zinc is really a treatment that can help very well. And we'll talk about other treatments that are even more potent with hormones in the, uh, the session. What about reversing female genitals? Well, uh, we'll talk about that in many details about clitoris size and, 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 and uh, prolapse, things like that. I'll keep you a little bit um, waiting because um, yeah, other things we're going to see now. Leg atrophy, the mechanism is a lack of anabolic hormones, but it also can be a lack of physical exercise and amino acid supply. So you might have to work on giving the hormones that are missing, but also increasing the amino acid supply and uh, making the patient have physical exercise. Sag in the tire size of the ties, you see in this study that I published was that growth hormone um, decreased in 50% of the patients, uh, the sagging inner size of the ties, meaning that the ties got firmer in half the patients were taking growth hormone. Cellulite, this is cellulite. Uh, well, think about testosterone. This is our female to male transsexuals. You know, she, she became a, a he. And uh, after 12 months of testosterone in this study actually um, showed that the testosterone markedly increased the thigh muscle area uh, and decreased all subcutaneous fat depots. So you had more muscles, less fat in the thighs. That's decreasing cellulite. So you see that subcutaneous thigh fat was decreased and the hip and abdominal fat was decreased too. But not the visceral fat that had a little bit an increase. Swollen calves with spitting edema. Aldosterone excess is frequent cause of uh, swollen calves with spitting edema. So that, because aldosterone keeps on fluid and so you, you keep on the fluid in, in the leg and uh, gives this sort of aldosterone excess. Transiently swollen calves, you see you get a pitting edema. Thyroid deficiency can also give swollen calves, but you don't get pitting edema. So, um, and it's mostly in the evening and uh, the, uh, the second half of the day that you get the swelling, not in the morning. Bruises on legs, many causes. Testosterone deficiency is the main hormone uh, cause behind that. And uh, that can be also due to hypothyroidism because there's a lack of coagulation factors. There are many different nutritional deficiencies that can give that. Varicose veins on the legs. Um, there's an association with low testosterone levels. Venous leg ulcers can be improved by testosterone. It's really a repair hormone. You see here after three, this is after two months, after three months, and after eight months, and this is almost, you're going to lose the leg. Here you saved it. 
So we'll talk, talk about the doses that are applied and, and, and so that work. Now we finished uh, here this lecture. I'm going to give you some information and then we'll have question and answers. So you can type on your questions. Um, uh, so we'll answer, but first let me talk to you about that we need to make the movement grow. My idea is to, to help as much physicians as possible. So we need, so if you know doctors that can be interested, local companies, uh, scientific societies that we can contact, give us the, the details, give us the norm. Pharmacists that may be interested of working, pharmacists that can send products to, we're interesting to know that. So if you know, share this information with Isabel. Isabel is reachable on this email, Isabel at sign hertalk.eu. So please, you will really help you grow also with the, this movement. Then I want to talk to you about the evidence-based hormone therapy training program, because this is part of the evidence-based hormone therapy program. Um, you can, first of all, try to join this postgraduate program. Uh, you find a lot of practical information for your practice that you can share. Uh, you can contact office talk at eu for that, or the previous of Isabel is also reachable. And this postgraduate program, there's three, two different, three different options. There's an option that you go to full, full year and you have a special COVID price now uh, that normally ends end of December. So you will pay less if you subscribe now. There is also a second um, possibility is just subscribe for one model. You can just subscribe for this model of eight uh, sessions, for example, if that is in your interest. And, or you can, or another one that might be more interesting, like uh, the fatigue and burnout syndrome uh, session. So you have a lot of different options. And then you have a special nutritional program. So this is the option where you just would go into what I just showed, the reversing physical aging course. And that just this session you can, can uh, um, um, subscribe for. You can also subscribe if you're just interested in nutritional parts. The first uh, topic, uh, the first topic of each model has a lot of nutritional information, dietary nutrition information that I really practice. You can just also um, um, go into that um, program, a special price that is much less if you are interested in. And then there are books that are important. And if you really want to do hormone therapy, you need to buy this book. This is the Hormone Handbook because it really has all the different information you need to know. Uh, it's very interesting. There's half of the book is also scientific references, but basically it's very, very, very easy uh, reading. Um, and, and you know exactly what you need to know for the treatment. You don't have time. You just look at everything that has yellow background, bright yellow background. That is more important. You will already know a lot. Then there's the testosterone the therapy for real gentlemen that I think is the most extensive book with the most extensive reference, but also the most practical information on testosterone therapy. It has information also on how to reverse prostate hypertrophy, how to reverse gynecomastia, uh, and, and um, how to, to get down, down, but not too much down the, uh, the high estrogen levels and what they may cause as a problem. And everything you ever turns around testosterone is in this book. There's also a reversing physical aging book that is uh, the book that really has a lot of material that you have in um, the um, uh, model on reversing physical aging. So a lot, 1100 1, pages, really interesting. And then the Atlas of Endocrinology for Hormone Therapy, also very uh, interesting, has been recently updated, also with ref references, but there's more than 650 pictures. Of, um, of hormone therapy, uh, of 20 hormone um, deficiencies and 19 hormone excesses. So really, really the information you need, uh, if you start with two books, it's the hormone handbook and the atlas you need to start. And then the other books uh, come in second position uh, for you as a help. Uh, so you can buy them on hertalkmedicalschool.eu. And then there are some general public book. There's one on oxytocin, the general here, the hormone handbook for patients that is a reduced form of the hormone handbook. We also are um, very happy because we, to have partners, people that help us uh, grow the movement. And um, I think I'm, I'm going to let 
talk uh, here. I have to click on it. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh. I am Joe from Farm and Earth Belgium. First of all, I want to thank Jerry and Klaus and their team for the tremendous work they're doing with their movement towards more prevention and better health for all. Farm and Earth is one of Europe's largest producers of very high quality food supplements and is active in 45 countries. We have more than 400 studies who are conducted with the final products of Almond Art. Lots of universities use our products because of the unique level of bioavailability. Besides our Q10, the bioactive Q10, and the selenium plus zinc, and our melatonin, the sublingual form biomelatonin complex, and the melatonin 3 milligram Farmer North, is a registered drug in Belgium, is our deep pearls probably the best known product. I think that everyone today is convinced of the benefits of vitamin D. In Great Britain, our deep pearls is used at this moment by 5,000 British people in a large vitamin D study in the battle against COVID-19. Those things make us very proud. If in the meanwhile, we could mean something for you or your patients, or you, you could use a sample of our North product, you can always come with us. Jerry, thank you very much for this time. And everyone have a really nice day. Bye. So there was Joe Klaus of Pharmanor, which is really a high quality um, company. We always like to work with them because they have the good products. And here I have um, Noah Shalabai from the Philippines. Hello everyone. My name is Noah Shalabai. I'm the founder of and consultant compounding pharmacist at Sweet Leaf Pharmacy Compounding Lab. And as a fan of BHRT that came through my successful encounters with different patients in the last eight years, it's important to highlight that the teaching of Dr. Hertog had a great impact and a great difference in, in patients' lives, with uh, especially those with uh, uh, thyroid dysfunctions and hormonal imbalances. And that's why I was so keen to join uh, Dr. Hertog Medical School and get enrolled in his evidence-based hormonal therapy online training in, in, to gain more knowledge about the BHRT. And actually, from the very first module, I learned a lot and I'm sure that this training will, will have great impact on you in your practice as well. So uh, I encourage you to join the, the evidence-based uh, hormonal therapy training. And let's join hands and make big difference in our patients' lives. Thanks to Dr. Hertog. Thank you, Noah. Thank you. And here is Nicholas. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to introduce you to Laboratoire Cockmed. Laboratoire Cockmed has been created in 1993 in France, positioning themselves on the natural health product market since their beginnings. Our main focus has always been to offer the best natural health products. Laboratoire Cockmed provides mostly synergized formula for maximum efficiency. Our core commitment is that makes a difference. Number one, novel ingredients, natural and high quality from organic or sustainable farming, mainly are based in terms of the GMO free certified, parametry, without artificial coloring, as part of the and without nanoparticles. Oui. Number two, 100% natural oui, and made of cellulose, extracted from the fermentation of the cellulose, capsules protect plants and nutrients efficiently oui, from the oui. oui. Number three, 100% biodegradable and recyclable feed box. Our feed box are made of sugar cane, guaranteed oil free, which is good for people and good for the planet. And number four, quality control. Our products are made in France under quality insurance from ISO 22000 certified laboratories. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, so Nicolas is uh, Nicolas is really um, so, um, they have really affirmed that is uh, doing the sustainable and saving the planet and, and good products. So you have all the advantages. Here are a lot of other uh, contributors uh, that help us to grow the movement. Uh, it's too much to tell, but it's 90 the first. There's Access, there's PharmaNor, there's uh, Qualivita, there's uh, 
uh, if you want a mercury preventage, uh, energetic and natura vital plus, um, portal apoptotic and, and, and anti-aging system, very important uh, in the movement. Uh, and so, so basically we're bio so, so we have, we're very happy to work with all these, these partners. Um, now, also before I'm going to question and answer, and I'll have that short because we're extending, there's a, a, the next live free webinar. So really book the date will be February the 2nd, 2021. It's normally at the same time. And it will go on female hormone deficient therapy. You will see it goes further than we have. It will be shorter. Uh, this is an extent, this is the longest I think uh, we, we have as a free webinar due to the fact that it's over an extensive uh, reversing physical aging book. And so we'll, we'll have some question and answers. Um, I will see if there's the, the question and answer here. I have 40 questions, won't be able to see all the questions, but we'll, we'll, um, some of the questions might be uh, taken over in our question and answer session. I must say that those who go in the models, they, we have um, every month uh, a question and answer session where you can ask the question. And I can tell you, they were all very excited about it because also the questions are, were very interesting and not only the answers. So uh, we'll go now on the questions and I have questions here. Uh, how about a cheesy snack? Uh, said it, uh, how about a cheese? I, th I think a cheesy snack is with cheese and it's certainly very bad for uh, wrinkles and for, um, um, because the, it's, 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 it was a milk product that irritates intestines. Cow milk is not made for us. If you take it once a month, it's not a problem, a cheesy snack, but if you take it regularly, it's a problem. If cortisol, then the question is from Angie Utami. If cortisol is around six, can we use Grotamon? Uh, I don't know what the six is. I suppose it's low. I think it's if the cortisol is too low, you're in danger by giving Grotamon because Grotamon decreases the cortisol. So you need to correct that or to give very small dose of growth hormone because the person won't tolerate the, an optimal dose. What nutrient can upgrade the ACTH level? I don't know what nutrient can upgrade the SHL. I know what cortisol uh, eventually can be improved. It can be improved with vitamin C, for example, and amino acids, uh, but I don't know for ACTH. How DHA works in COVID-19? Well, um, you should go in the model, uh, uh, in the model on infection where we have all the details uh, for uh, this. But I must say that I didn't find a study where DHA was um, active in COVID-19, but it should be because uh, uh, DHA is very active to many different um, uh, viruses and including the HIV virus, where it seems to slow it down. Um, how parathyroid work for anti-aging? Parathyroid hormone can uh, reverse osteoporosis 12% in a year if you really do a good treatment. Uh, so it can help uh, to in anti-aging, but if you give too much parathyroid, it's also not good, but it's so expensive that basically you won't give too much. That's Ovidio Nicolae Perez. Uh, best is desiccated or synthetic thyroid? Best is desiccated thyroid I would give because it has a more 24 hour on 24 hour effect per more permanent effect. Um, is FSH normal less than seven for 50 year old lady? Um, if it's less than seven uh, for a 50 year old lady, she's probably not menopausal because the FSH is above 30 or at 30 when there's menopause. So it looks that she still has menstruation and is still low or this woman has a uh, if she's menopausal, she has a difficulty of secreting TSH. Something's wrong there, but that the, the, that demands further investigation. Then Jeremy Fisher says, do we have research showing that testosterone or growth hormone supplementation will decrease atherosclerosis even in the absence of deficiency? Um, well, the research is actually not based on deficiency. The research showed that when you give gro this growth hormone, um, testosterone is less efficient, but growth hormone, it, there are, I think there are eight studies showing that it decreases atherosclerosis, whether you have a deficiency or not. It's just given in older men who have uh, atherosclerosis and they don't really look at the deficiency and just give growth hormone to see if it works on atherosclerosis. And that it does show good efficacy. Um, then, um, what reference range do you aim for replacement of estradiol progesterone and testosterone in women? I would say, let's go and look at the model that will be over that because you'll have very specific information because the references 
are usually the, those of young adults, uh, but depending on the type of person, it may uh, differ. Will this affect? Will uh, this affect ones who have cancer? So uh, the patients who have cancer first have to treat their cancer by removing the tumor if it's possible, and then they can take the treatment. Uh, stu many studies show that in female breast cancer and in uh, uh, prostate cancer in men, um, you can give hormones. It doesn't increase the recurrence. Uh, if we have diabetic patient with almost blind eyes, can we reverse with hormone and nutrition? What hormone and nutrition? Um, well, if it's diabetic patients, often there's so much damage done to the eye that you cannot totally reverse it probably with hormones and nutrition if you're on the late stage. But if in the early stage, you probably can totally reverse it. Now, which uh, nutrients, it depends on the deficiency the person has. If you go and look at my uh, um, textbook of reversing physically, you get all the details of what nutrients are important to reverse the eyesight, depending on what the problem is. And then you know what to search for in the lab test and what to give then as a treatment. Can we use L-carnitine in 14 year olds with low muscle mass? You can give uh, L-carnitine in 14 years old with low muscle mass, not uh, of danger. The only thing that you need to be in, in, in um, taking into account, if you give very high amounts of um, carnitine, it does decrease the thyroid function. It decreases the conversion of T4 to T3. So you get a sort of hypothyroidism. How old your younger patient treat with insulin? Uh, I suppose that the question is, um, uh, what was your youngest patient treated with insulin uh, without having real diabetes for a thing? I, I usually only treat very old people or very thin people, but, but that are still already above age 30 with insulin, a small dose of insulin to improve um, their looks when they already are starting to age. Can you give estrogen therapy to estrogen and breast cancer? Yes, you can. And I will extensively, and will, I hope I will have an expert in the model on female hormone uh, therapy that will uh, talk about that. You can, but there are some conditions that you need to respect uh, and small doses and um, a certain time after the cancer. How to test, or is there any lab to detect relax, relaxin deficiency? No, there's no lab test to detect relaxant deficiency. I'll go over because I get about the same persons uh, asking the questions. How much does those, how much dose in melatonin topical? I think it's a 0.05% that uh, is, is very helpful uh, of melatonin, but there are different doses depending on what the problem may be. But the, there's a, a good lotion that I use. I think it's 0.05%. That's, that's good. But the, the thing is that, um, it has to be well prepared by a very good firm, otherwise it has a bad smell. And uh, so, so try to find a good product. Uh, how much dose in, uh, can we treat keloid or hypertrophic scars with melatonin? I don't think it's very efficient to treat uh, scars with, uh, or hypertrophic scars with melatonin. There are other treatments, including cortisol. Here I have Alice Ruggeri. If after a normal liposuction, the skin is left with way more or less fibroblast than before it could be done. Is there a way to regenerate fibroblasts with injections? Yes, and while we'll talk about in the session on uh, reverse physical aging about doing mesotherapy locally, it uh, has very, very good effects uh, on reversing um, and improving the skin when it has been too loose after uh, liposuction. What are doses for growth management and mixtures for vasopressin for relaxing? All the doses will be given in, in the, the, the lecture, but it depends on the patients. So it's not just one dose for everybody. That's why you really need to, to start studying. And, and ideal is not only go, taking the reverse the model on reverse physical aging, but also to, to go in the model on that hormone therapy treatment, because you get so many details that you really get much more expert in the field. The dosage of TS65, um, not sure. Um, I, I thought it was uh, five units, but I'm not sure uh, about the doses of TS65, which is a telomerase activator. Can we get a handout of your wonderful presentation? Uh, normally, those who subscribe to the model have a, have, have, have a handout of this. 
I, I don't know if they get it. Uh, I'm not the one in that minister part. I, I will ask the question on those who, who do it. Please again, how can you calculate IGF-1 according to IGF-1, IGF-1? Um, we'll have a, lecture, a whole model on growth model well, will be explained because it, in, for growth mode even, it's very important to know the size of the person, big or tall, small, it's different, but there's a special ratio. Uh, the, uh, there's a bioavailable ratio and the reference is, for example, between 20 and 85, and it's around the 35, 45, 45 accurate that you need to be of a ratio. Um, in minimals, Dr. I have, so I see a patient coming from, in, uh, a doctor from Indonesia. I have a nine-old daughter with macular degeneration caused by torch when she was baby. Her visual was poor. Can she be treated by melatonin at her age? Uh, a daughter of a nine-year can certainly be treated with melatonin. I, I think it's even, you can try uh, to um, take um, an oral form eventually to give high amount. Um, and um, probably uh, to make some drops, eye drops, maybe just mix a sort of a fluid for ser physiological serum in the eye and then put maybe um, some uh, melatonin in it. Um, but I think there's a, a deeper treatment that is possible to do. And it might be, for example, if I had such a pit, I would do mesotherapy injections around the eyes. And that probably would be a, a, a solution. Now, this. This child has 110 pounds, that's about 50 kilos. It's a bit much at nine years. So there's another problem of hypothyroidism probably and other. Okay, I'll do one more question. Uh, just one more question. There's many questions about growth hormone cause cancer, estrogen causing cancer. I can tell you uh, there's ways to avoid cancer and growth hormone normally decreases the cancer incidence by 50% in patients with severe deficiency. So it's okay, but you need to really have a more in-depth lecture than just the, the, the answer is not just simple, that in all cases you don't have cancer. Uh, in general, it's very safe treatments, but if you estrogen is too much, just not enough, you may be promoting cancer if there's breast pain, for example. So you need to have a good ratio. Uh, there's uh, myoma is not a contraindication normally for growth month, but uh, it's contraindication to give too much estrogen. And then um, where to get the fluid melatonin? There's um, a brand um, called Radiance, Radiance, R-A-D-I-A-N-C, Radiance. I like radiation, and uh, that is done by the group Nelly de Vest. They're in Canada, but I think they can ship all over. And it's really the best form of melatonin, I think, that we have on the local uh, treatment. It even uh, decreased uh, skin cancer and, and things like that. So it doesn't only have anti-aging effect. Okay. Um, I think we'll, we'll stop here. Um, I must say that we have question and answer sessions within the sessions that are very interesting. Uh, I think it's because the, the questions are also, also, also live. You, you, you can be the one who's talking actually, replacing me for a moment. So you ask your questions. So we, there's much more interactive. So I think really being part of the program will really help you to, to, to know more because uh, here we're having maybe 15 minutes of question and answer. Imagine when we have a whole hour and I can say after an hour, I'm more tired than those two hours that I just did now. Um, but but, but I'm, I'm also fascinated because the questions are really, really interesting. So I thank you for your attention. Thank you for being there. And I hope I will see you on the 2nd February and I hope I will see you maybe also on our um, models uh, really uh, that are interesting. See you then, bye-bye.